All right. So we pretty much have. Well, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to raise this up. As you can see. Better. There. Well, still, it's so big. All right. So before I put the upper and lower receiver together, these are the M16 handguards. They obviously are a lot longer than the M4. And this next step you would put the gas tube in. I just don't have a gas tube long enough. You don't need to have a gas tube. Um, really, you don't need a gas tube. It's not functional on a airsoft. Um, so this is what you do. You take the front, which is probably just a little bit narrower than the rear. You're going to slide it in to that ring. Like so. Then you're going to pull the D-ring. Get this. You're going to pull... So big. You're gonna pull the D ring back. You pull the D ring back. The hand guard will fold down into the into the grooves, and boom, there's a top. Now the bottom is pretty much the same as the top. You slide the front end. Like so, at an angle. Wait a minute. Ah, this is the top one. This top one, you can tell, has this little hole cut out for the gas tube, which I don't have. Actually, no, they're both the same. You just, you really gotta get the top in. All right, so the front. You just, I can get it. These are WE <laughs> hand cards, so uh, they should work. Oh, I messed up. Unlike the uh, M4. This little raised bump here goes on the outside of the ring, like so, or not. Maybe WE doesn't work. It should work though. D ring. Boom. Oh, I see why. I think I do need a, some barrel shims. Um, I don't know if you'll be able to tell. The top of the handguard doesn't line up, and that's because inside. Of the rear groove here, which is the where the barrel teeth sit, you see these little uh, nubs. Those sit actually inside of the teeth. So maybe I do have to shim the barrel. So let me just take. you where you put the shims this is this is a first for me I've never had to shim both the barrel I've never had to shim the barrel before at all it's just that I've never had to so the barrel shims 
I have no idea. Where do the brushes go? It would make sense for the barrel shims to go here. But how do you get the barrel shims on? If how do you get these barrel shims on? Don't tell me you what you have to. That is so weird. Oh, no, no, no. Okay. You can put the barrel shim. You gotta take the hop up out. Put the barrel shim over the hop up. Put the barrel back in to the outer barrel. Boom, there's one shim. So let's try one shim and see how our alignment is then. Because we're, if you notice, it was just leaning, um, let's say, at the 11 o'clock, which means when you tightened it, it tightened too far a little bit. So you want to make the shim so it stops it from tightening that quick. So. Not quickly, but it stops it from tightening or over tightening, I guess you would call it, since it's over where we need it to be. Hopefully, we don't run into the issue of the uh, flash hider where the threading was all wrong. But the thing is, is that it's a barrel nut for this receiver. Whereas the flash hider was going on to a totally different rifle. There we go. Yeah. Okay, one shim did it for me. Let me just make sure. I don't think I need to, uh, I don't think I need to, uh, show you again how to put the top one on. These WE hand grips just really don't want to work as well as they should. Uh, these are getting replaced soon anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Just, I don't want to keep the There we go. Now, now it is pretty much aligned. It's off by a little bit, but it shouldn't be too much. Get the bottoms on. I guess these WE ones don't really quite work. I don't know why. I'm just having trouble getting the bottom ones to fit inside of there. So, I don't know if I can. Just 
trying to get this bottom this bottom rail to go on. Top one goes on no problem. Uh, the bottom one is giving me some issue. The bottom rail is what matters most to me right now, actually, because that's where my hands go. See, if, if I take the top off and then put the bottom rail, put the top rail on the bottom, it fits. So maybe you gotta. No, that's stupid. Maybe the, let's look at the, let's compare the rails. I'm having an issue with the top ones fitting, or the, the front of the handle guards fitting. So, where are the M4 handrails or hand guards? Oh. I think I have to make this a little more circular. As you can see, these were catching right here on these corners and right here. So, get my knife. Actually, let me use the file. That might be a little bit safer. Top ones go in, no problem. Got the bottom ones. A little bit more modification. modification. <laughs> This lug, that lug, and the corner right here and here is hitting. So I'm just gonna cut these. here in this corner nub right there. Oh, yeah, that did it. It fits now. <laughs> so, so, yeah, cutting, cutting those nubs off right there. Uh, I left them on the top. 
cleaning them off on the bottom is what did it. Um, I don't know why. I guess for WE it's a little bit different, uh, but for GMP it still works, just some modification. And the next part, which is going to be very hard to film since my closet is so small. Together. And we have an M16 length upper with an M4 lower, or M16 A4 lower with a collapsible butt stock. That concludes about 60 to 70. I'm gonna say about 70% of this build is done. Just need some little add ons, the hand guards, and the full buttstock, and this rifle will be complete. So, next week I will finish this build series. Till then, I'm gonna do some chrono tests to see the difference between. M16 length barrel with a tight bore versus an M4 with a stock regular bar inner barrel. So we should see how much the FPS has increased. But oh god, finally it's starting to come together. It is almost together. Just need the full stock, the hand guards, and pre pretty much after that it's a M16A4. Thank you for watching.